Bespoke Targ, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. And once again, it is time for another Orc Mode workout. And today was Max Effort Bench Press Day. But a quick reminder for those of you who enjoy these videos, please remember to click like down below. It would be greatly appreciated. Help me keep the likes higher than the dislikes. So I decided to work with the really, really wide grip floor press. Now, we know that on wide grip stuff, I am ultra weak off the chest. We know that I am ultra fast off the chest with close grip. My best benches have been hit with a close grip. But as I've said, I need to build both up. I need to build both up just like I need to get my sumo up to go with my conventional. I need to well round everything out. We've come back from that shoulder inflammation. I've lost a fair amount of pressing strength. I've rehabbed it and I've got to rebuild it. So I really needed to kind of figure out where my wide grip pressing is going to be. And it's actually weaker than I expected today. Like I legitimately thought I was going to be able to get 315. Mm, 295 was grindy off this. Okay, it's disappointing on this lift, but it lets me know how my strength is regressed. And for perspective, remember before I inflamed my shoulder earlier this summer doing those pull-ups, I hit a 352 close grip bench press. Okay, 352 on the close grip. But this was tough. And you guys can look at that and people say, is that lockout? Well, no, triceps are always can be a pressing weakling for me, definitely on close grip. But I felt so much chest on all of that. My entire chest was lit up. And you know, the thing is, I've noticed, and I'm, I'm pulling the flies out. Um, I'm just going to do bigger movements. I've noticed that I feel the floor press in my chest. And I've said that before in the past more than any other lift. When I did a bunch of floor pressing, that built my strength back up to where shortly after I got that 352 close grip. So even the, the wider grip floor pressing tends to help my close grip bench also. So I might as well use it. It hits my chest harder than anything else I do. I feel it more than flies. Um, dips are probably number two. And I thought about doing dips today. I had to really, really, really think about that. I'm like, what am I going to do for my second lift? But I've realized it'll probably serve my needs better to mess with some certain close grip variations. Because if I'm going to go wider grip, and we know I'm slow off the chest on wider grip, I really need to work on my arching. My arching uh, leaves a lot to be desired. I need to start getting better and better at arching. And that also means I need to learn to press from those lower angles. Okay. And, and I almost wish I had dumbbells. And, and for people to say, well, you can, no, guys, you can't really get decent dumbbells right now. And I've got stuff ordered from Rogue. Like, I've got like $700 worth of stuff I've ordered from Rogue that I'm still waiting on. Okay. Uh, it's just hard to get anything these days. And other stuff I'm waiting on to come back in stock. And I think long term, my, my cheapest bet for really adjustable dumbbells is to get their Olympic 15 pound handles and buy a bunch of their cheap 10 pound cast iron plates when they get it all back up. And that could be a while. That could be months. But I think long term, that's what I would need to do for dumbbells. Um, some dumbbells to do like decline chest presses and stuff would actually be pretty good. But I decided, let me just work with the floor press. This is going to be my goal. I'm going to use it as my main chest builder. And I need to get in enough volume to stimulate that growth and carry over to my bench. And I said, I'm going to just start working with 225, no matter what bar it is. And I'm going to work for reps. Now that I got it before I can do it for 10. And my first set always feels hard. Like that, that first set felt like a limit set. The second set it didn't. I knew I left a rep in reserve. Third set, I got 12. Okay, third set, I got 12. So we know we can get 12 reps with the wide grip on the close grip. Um, but I also struggled to really get position down on that, that other one. And it was just grindy and my weaklings were coming out on that max. So, I mean, we would look at this projection and go, how is that? That max does not even add up. Okay, that max doesn't even add up. I should have been able to hit easy 325. But, you know. Again, I'm also not used to maxing on floor presses. I haven't done it in a very, very, very long time. Maybe I should work on it. But we'll keep working with this. We'll keep building this up um, and keep getting stronger and stronger at the rep work on the wide grip floor press. And when, these, when I say wide grip, guys, my index finger is on the rings. So I'm pretty much at the limits of a, a legal with grip bench. And I need to do work there. I've got to build that chest up. So I started thinking, you know, I need tricep and I need pec. Those need to be high priorities. Because my close grip benching, my triceps are always my weak link. Pecs seem to be the weak link on wide grip. 
So the floor press handles the pec with some triceps. So let's start working at what's going to really give me the most tricep work. I'm going to do tons of band press downs for second workouts and later anyways. I don't really need smaller movements during my main workout for triceps. I can get plenty of volume if I'm careful with this. So I set up my arch better there. You guys saw me practice getting a little more arch. And I'm like, let me just rep out heavy chains. Um, for those who don't know how much the chains are, that's 55 pounds of chains. And they're pretty much coming up to the last length, the way I set them. So I've got 55 pounds of chains, you know, with just 135. And I did sets of 15. And I tried to lock every rep. Okay, so I actually got both a lot of chest pump on top of it because my chest was throbbing after, after the floor presses. And I got tricep work. I rarely feel my triceps on closed grip bench that much, even though people think of it as a tricep movement. I rarely feel them that much until I get really fatigued, like deep sets, or I hit a final rep. But by doing the really high reps with the chains and making sure that I lock it each rep and trying to force it towards my feet instead of letting the, letting the bar drift up, like I'm actually keeping it, trying to drive it towards my feet, my triceps really got lit up. And I think it's because I did the addition to the chains with the high reps to build that fatigue. So this should give me really good carryover to my, my close grip benching. Okay, because why do I need more tricep? To get stronger at benching, in particular to be stronger at my close grip work. Well, this will make me stronger at it because I'm making the triceps the, the limit. I'm actually doing more work at the part where I tend to fail on a close grip by adding the extra chain work there and doing tons of volume to hypertrophy it there. But we're still practicing a bench. So I'm killing two birds with one stone. And you know, some people say, but don't you need extra small tricep movements? So I'm gonna do band work later. If I do, you know, several sets of band pushdowns today and tomorrow, and maybe start doing a little bit more of them throughout the week again, I think the band work will handle the small exercises that I need. I can focus on the really efficient stuff that's going to give me the, the best carryover to specifically what I'm doing. And then the bands will just build my tricep tendons and build everything up. Um, but it doesn't mean I won't do some JM presses and other stuff in here. And I might do some extensions again from time to time during the main workouts. But I feel like stuff like this, because it lets me practice my arch. It lets me really practice a hard lockout over and over and over with the chains. Because uh, I did five sets of 15. I think on the final set, I only got 13. I had to kind of rest pause a couple of the sets. Uh, but, again, let me practice my arch. Let me get extra chest work. But here's, here's how this kills two birds with one stone. We know I'm fast off the chest on close grip. We know that we get chest development from the floor press. The floor press hits my chest super, super hard. That wide grip floor press will improve my wide grip bench out of the bottom. It will also make, build my pecs up for whatever I need for the close grip. So I don't need the pecs to be an ultra high priority on the close grip volume work here. They're still getting worked. I mean, keeping in mind, my chest, chest is still getting fatigued. It is still getting a pump from this. We're just making sure that we're over focusing then on the other end. In that case, the true weak link on my close grip pressing, let's just build a strength curve to address the weak link and do the volume for hypertrophy and get the joint angle specificity involved. We explode against those chains in a heavy lockout. And it, it, people are saying, well, that's not that heavy, Jason, for you, that's, that's only 190. Yeah, but for multiple sets of 15, that's the difference. And you know, we'll build up from there. But again, it's, it's hypertrophy with some joint, specif joint angle specificity. So I think this is a, a good combination for now to work with on some of these days. It addresses the weak links to both variations of my bench. Because what are we trying to do here? We, we've got to get strong at everything. I'm never going to have a good bench until I shore up every weak link and I get good at wide grip and close grip and then see where they land and whichever is the strongest is the strongest for me. But we know I need a lot more chest for the wide grip and I need a little bit of movement specificity. And that, that floor press really does it. This helps me set up my arch, which will also carry over. Helps me practice the arch. Helps me build the muscles specifically to the weak links in my close grip. Because the rest of the close grip is getting trained with the floor press. That carries over to the bottom for me. Even when I was doing medium grip floor press, a bunch of it, it carried over really well even to my, my close grip bench pressing. It helped me get that PR. 
So we got a fair amount of, of quality work there following the, the floor press, which I was not happy with. And I'll, I'll admit that I'm unhappy with that. Like I, that, that is not a good display today. But we also know that I'm rehabbing and rebuilding. But we'll get there. And we'll come back and mess with some other floor press variations. But I'm going to have to start messing with some wider grip maxes. Okay, I'm going to have to start messing with some. I'll still mess with some closed grip stuff too. Because that's where I'm stronger for now. But we're going to build it with that, that wide grip. And by making sure all my big tricep exercises still work the chest. Okay, that's important. I needed my, my main tricep movement for the day. Again, the closed grip with chains. I needed it to still train my chest. My chest needs general hypertrophy too. Okay, that let me kill two birds with one stone. And then we'll get plenty of it. When we come to speed day, I'm going to start doing the standard west side method where I start wide and work in. So we're going to do the first sets with the wide grip, then the medium, then the closed grip so that we train all those elements. So it, everything is going to get worked in a more balanced manner because I have to get my bench up. I've got to get it caught up just like I'm going to be addressing my weakest variations of the squatting and the deadlifting. Right, those are going to be addressed because I know my big ones are not going to go down because I'm going to keep training all my supplemental work. Shore up our weakest links, train the general hypertrophy of everything, continue to build my posterior chain and back. But you know, we're going to work the safety bar a lot more. We're going to do a lot more sumo stuff. We're going to balance the sumo and conventional. It's going to be half and half. So we've got to work those weak links. Um, these today, man, I felt so much bicep. And it made me realize because I felt a ton of bicep, and I'll be honest there, my, my bicep, old bicep injury and, and poor bicep development overall is definitely a factor in the wide grip benching. And these, me trying to, you know, externally rotate the elbows uh, and make sure that I spread the lats at the bottom. Today on these, after getting that bicep pump from all the, the floor pressing, I had a tremendous bicep and forearm pump on these. I felt my lats obviously working really, really hard. But I felt a lot of bicep, especially that stretch on it. And I also realize that, you know, that's sometimes my bicep gets tight and it can make locking hard. And again, I've got some scar tissue and stuff. So I do wonder if that affects my bench lockout at times. So I decided today for the curls, we're going to forego the axle bar for a while. We're going to go over and try to work incline curls. Why? They stretch everything. It puts me into that deep stretch position. It can possibly improve my range of motion. Because static stretching doesn't help with that stuff, but dynamic might. Okay. See if I can maybe make the bicep more resilient to tears by contracting it from a stretch position. Right? Contracting it from a stretch position, in addition to getting that loaded stretch so that we hopefully can maybe increase the range of motion a hair to make my bench lockouts easier. And we need bigger biceps because I need the stabilizing. I, I realize my biceps are not strong enough to stabilize my wider grip benching as much as they should because I feel them just light up. They feel like I've done curls afterwards. Now, people who say that's in your head, no, it's not in my head. Go look at the, the research on it. There is legitimate research looking at muscle activation in the bicep. And the wider your bench grip goes, the more bicep involvement there is because it's such a powerful dynamic stabilizer that it actually contracts quite hard. So with me doing the really wide, me being at the limits of a meat legal bench for those all that floor work, okay, me being at that limit, we know we need that work. But the same thing, my biceps were just pumped through this entire workout. Okay, I felt them tremendously through the rowing. I felt them on these too. Obviously, I felt more shoulder here, just like I felt a ton of lat. But I felt just as much bicep as lat on the rows. I still felt my biceps here a lot. So, again, we need to keep working the biceps. And I've been working them a lot. I've been doing really, really high rep stuff. And today was a little heavier than I've been doing. I've been doing mostly 20s. Um, so I did my five sets of 15 on this. And I've increased the weight slightly over time. And I'm at a good working weight to where these are getting challenging past rep 10. But, again, we want to keep light enough that it's easy on the shoulder. Because, again, I don't want a bunch of axial loading. I want my shoulder movements to build that entire shoulder girdle with enough workload and with volume, but in a way that doesn't beat up my recovery. 
That's the problem with the overhead pressing, even the wide grip. It's a lot of strain on the on the erectors and the low back. Right? I do enough squatting and deadlifting. I don't need anything else interfering with that, especially with all my heavy good mornings. So I do all these reverse hypers just to handle the recovery in. I don't need anything else contributing. So again, the, these are a good choice as long as I go light. And by using the really wide grip, we're forced to go lighter, but we get a safer shoulder movement. And it just hammers the side delt, rear delt, upper trap. And that whole area needs to come up. I need more shoulders in general. It will improve my benching, improve aspects of my squat. But my bench needs the stability. Okay? We need meat in all those areas to bring up that bench, especially as I start arching more and more. I'm going to need that area to be more developed. It will help. It'll help me get out of the bottom of that bench. So it matters. So these things have to be worked. And uh, the same thing is what I was thinking of when I did my incline curls in a minute. You know, it's it's like I'm not worrying about any low back stuff. Sometimes even on the on the curls, I'll wear a belt, and people will ask why. It's like because they they cause fatigue in the low back. And I have so much low back work in my training on the other days. I really don't want to get any. I don't want any low back fatigue if I can avoid it uh, on my, my upper body days, my benching days. This is the only thing I do to where I'm standing at this point. Okay. And it's because I don't have a good replacement. This exercise is so good for what I do. And again, I can minimize that, that by being careful with how I do it. Uh, the incline curls, though, they were harder than I thought. Because, I mean, normally I, I'm like, you know, 25. I do a little over 50 pounds anyways for sets of 20 with the other standing curls. And the incline curls, these were tough. I got like 13 to 15 reps. And there we go. Not the most flattering angle, but it is what it is. I don't have a belt on for this. Um, you know, about the loose skin, though, I'm going to keep cutting. I've reached 219. And I'd said earlier the goal was going to be to get down to 215 and assess. I've realized I definitely think I need to be more at 210. So we'll drop another nine pounds of fat and we'll see if that tightens up some of the loose skin around there. Um, it may, it may not, guys. It may be one of those cases where I might always have loose skin without surgery. You know, after the hundred pounds of fat loss. It, it might be unavoidable and I can live with that because I don't want a stupid surgery. I don't want that crap. I don't want the downtime from training to deal with some dumbass surgery. It's not worth it to me. Okay, it's not going to increase my money significantly. So, you know, who cares? But uh, it may tighten up a, a bit more. We'll see how the collagen supplement helps. We'll see how more fat loss. Because another nine pounds, keep in mind a gallon of fat, a one gallon jug of fat is seven pounds of fat. I'm going to be losing pure body fat like I've done before on a DEXA scan because uh, I'm trying to gain muscle while I do this. So we'll, we'll lose more than a gallon of fat. So it, it will tighten all that up some no matter what. Because that's where the bulk of my fat is in that loose skin. That's a whole lot of my subcutaneous fat. Well, you know, is what it is. I'm not worried about it, though. I mean, people can see it. It's there. But these were tough. These were tough. They hit what I wanted them to hit. I felt a lot of almost tingling through that left side, though, where that old tear and scar tissue is. But uh, good workout outside of the maxes, so I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.